you've ever tried to use the standard mapping widget in Flutterflow, you'll know it's a little bit limited. So what we've got here is some custom map widgets that I'm just going to run through quickly. These are available on rapidmvp.co. I'll show you how they work. And then we'll go into the Flutterflow project, see how they're set up. And we'll have a look at what they're doing. So this is all about user interaction. So if our user wants to interact with our maps, they can't currently with the standard mapping widget within Flutterflow. It's the Google mapping widget if you haven't used it. And users can't add their own markers, add their own polygons, etc., etc. You have to have them delivered from the app. So what we want, we want users to be able to add the information to our map so they can save it and we can use it elsewhere in our apps. So we've got a few here. So the first one is adding a single marker. And see, I'm using this on a device. And basically, how I've got this set up, the user can just sort of tap the map and an individual marker will be placed. I've got it set to default to central London. And then I've got it set up as a sort of a, an instant reporting type scenario. So you can just create an event log and save it somewhere to a database. Good use for this kind of thing. Obviously I've got the location there just to the lat long. You can use the Google API to turn the, turn the lat long into address. So that's another option you could do. But this is just storing the lat long save it to a database and you can use it for whatever kind of app you want to build. So that's the first one. The second one, our user can just add multiple icons to the map. And again, you can create an action with a floating action button or whatever. So your you can save that to a list and again, use that somewhere else in your app, whatever you may want to use a list of icons for. So that's number two. The third one we have got is user can add a polygon. So basically we just user can add the screen and they can draw a polygon however many sides they want. And then if you float an action button will then save those coordinates of that polygon to the list. So again, you can store that, it saves it to an app state. You can store that and put it in the database or use it elsewhere in your app. So again, we've got that. And our next one is circles where we've got bottom sheet where we can change the circle radius and that's meters. So let's go 500 meters and then we just add, we can add a circle one at a time. Basically that is the circles version. And then we have current user location. I've got my location currently set to London as the default, but if we allow our device access to our location, and we push the location button at the top there, it will go to our current location, which I'm not going to do right now, but that's what it does. And obviously we can then include that with some of the other elements of the map with such as markers, circles, polygons, etc. And so our users can put those where they currently are. Right, so here we are on Flutterflow. This is the page for the single icon on a map. So our user will add an icon, click the action button, and then the bottom sheet will come up with the what I'm using as an instant log again you can use it for whatever whatever purposes fits your app but that's what I thought would be a good example and all of these are basically custom code as you can see they're all custom completely custom widgets there is the only stuff on the page that is standard flutter flow in this instance is the floating action button obviously the navigation but the floating action button and then the bottom sheet with the custom component that we're using so the map in itself, every single one of these maps is a custom widget, basically. So let's go to back to the single point. One thing to note is the dependency we're using Flutter map for all of these. So I'll put a link to the docs in the description below so you can go to the Flutter map docs and have a, a look around and have a look for yourself. There are some code demos, obviously, there's one there. And these are pretty good. They go through all the different layers and everything you're going to use. There's one thing I will mention off the bat. I used OpenStreetMap for my map tiles, which does require attribution. So you don't want to get yourself in trouble. And I would make sure that whichever map tiling you're using, you are either paying for it or giving it attribution where necessary and make sure you're not breaking their terms of service for your mapping. Just thought I'd say that off the bat. Let's have a look. I'm not going to go across the code line by line. 
so these are available if you want to use them on rapidmvp.co but i will pick out some little bits and pieces one of the things to note is flutter map uses lat long 2 basically so we we've got a function there to convert from the flutter version of lat long to lat long 2 i personally don't really know the, what the difference is but you have to convert them otherwise you're going to get errors that took me a while to figure that one out but that is all done within all of these so for instance we have got a place mark which is type lat long if you use the standard lat long coordinates out of the flutter map dependency you'll get an error because it's a different type you can't assign a lat long to to a lat long type so you have to convert them that's where i found around it obviously as usual it is a way not always the way um but just something to bear in mind and the other thing i'll sort of mention within these all the different sort of markers etc all completely customizable you can change the marker type and the icon type and the colors and the size and all that that's all pretty easy to do and your initial center for instance i've picked london but again you can pick wherever you want and your tile layer is here and that's where the tiles are being pulled from so i say i'm using the street map you want to change that possibly and then as you see we are storing our place coordinates in an app state so that's a single marker one okay so this is the one for multiple markers and it's not massively different apart from the obvious that we're adding more than one map marker and you see there we've got a list called markers and then on tap we've got a function there and we're adding markers to the list again completely customizable in terms of the type of marker you use and then they're also being added to our app state marker list so we're going to end up with an app state which is just a list of lat long coordinates so markers list we've got a list of lat long coordinates and once again we are converting them from lat long to to lat long everything else pretty much remains the same we're our initialized center is london again obviously change that to wherever you want and so in the map container obviously we've got the tiles the markers and this one actually has the simple attribution widget which again comes from the flutter map docs and that's the one we're using there the simple attribution one so once again not going to go through this line by line but it's pretty self-explanatory and with app state you can save it to superbase or to firebase whatever you're doing and again you can use that elsewhere in your app for multiple markers and you can also attach that obviously to an action so like we had in the first example we were reporting an incident you could whatever you wanted to do obviously you can use those coordinates for whatever you wish so the next one was circles and this one we've actually got an action on our button which is just displaying the bottom sheet with our custom component called circle and all that is is just ask us for the radius of the circle which we're storing in an app state called circle radius and that is a type double because it may not be 100 meters it may be 100.2 or whatever it may be so so you can use decimal numbers basically so we're storing that there and then in our circle in our add in the circle we are calling the app state to get the radius of the circle as you can see there so the app state that we're using to store the circle information is actually slightly different because we've got circle parameters and it is a data type circles so we've got location and radius so for every circle we want to store in the app state we we'll restore the the lat long and the radius of the circle so it can be reproduced obviously so that's what we're doing there and then in the code we're adding circle params from the location for circle params app state we are adding the point and the radius we're adding the radius the circle radius we are creating in this in the other app state which we are typing into our custom component and i believe the default if you don't do anything the default i believe is set to a hundred meters which you have can change to your default to whatever you want 
everything else is the same we've got our center in London we've got our tile layer and we've got our an attribution layer you can change the color of the circle and you can change the width of the border you can change the color of the border and the you know, color of of the fill plus the opacity so I've got it set up 0.5 so you can actually see through the circles a bit if you remember back to uh, when I was demonstrating on the on the phone there a few minutes ago next up we've got the polygon map I'll just go to the widget code we have got a couple of app states and we've also added marks if you noticed on the demonstration there we're adding little markers every time we click to polygon point so that's what we've got a markers list that we're adding there and then we've got a list of polygons points and we are adding mark to the screen again all changeable customizable to whatever you wish and then we've got another app state which is are we drawing a polygon true or false so that becomes true when we start drawing another polygon and then we add in the coordinates to each corner of the polygon to our marker list app state and again we're converting them to lat long from lat long to which is the conversion that we said about earlier and then down here on the layers we've got like the same as the same as all the others we've got the tile layer the polygon layer the markers layer which are the little tiny map markers that are coming up and then the attribution so we're adding a marker as we go around the screen tapping the polygon and storing the coordinates for that polygon in an app state which we can then use to our heart's content in our app for whatever we wish if we go to the page obviously that's all the custom code within the widget and then on the action button what we're actually doing this is so you can save it if you wish but at the moment it's just set to on tap we are setting the value drawing polygon false so when we start a new polygon it sets to true so when we save it we're setting it to false and we're clearing the markers list so what you would do in this instance above that you would add your actions for maybe updating a row in Superbase or whatever or maybe using it somewhere else in your app so then you can clear it and then your user can start a new polygon that is the theory behind that so on the save button at the moment we are just giving it the ability to start a new polygon because it will clear those values of are we drawing a polygon yes we're setting that to false so it gets we're, in, we're not drawing a polygon and then we clear the markers list and then we can draw another polygon so just to reiterate you would then add actions above that to do something with the polygon you've just created before you cleared them obviously so the last version is the user finding their own location so on the page we're basically requesting the permissions on page load and essentially are we allowing it yes or no and then if we are we are adding the current device location to an app state called current location so that's all we're doing on the page really the rest of it's done in the custom widget so as we come down it's all very similar they're all very similar these these widgets but this is the section where we are actually getting our location using the map controller move to our new location which is our app state with the zoom level we are setting and then on map tap same as the very first version you can add a marker and we're putting that in an app state now what you can do on these for instance any of the other on tap functions can be put in here and it just changed the map type um, so you can use whatever combination of these you wish and then here's where we've got our icon for our current center and then basically what we're doing is pressing the icon we are going to our current location we've stored in the app state when we gave the app our permissions basically and then we come down here and we've got the layers again so okay so the one thing you can do with these you could put these within a stack so if you wanted a page where your user had the option of what type of map they wanted to use you could actually create them in a stack so you could have a toolbar with the different types on with the icon for each and then much like you've got down here and then your user just decide which one and then you show them conditionally based on the toolbar rather than having because obviously this is just so I can 
navigate between them but you'd, you wouldn't do that obviously in a real app you'd put them you'd have a toolbar if you wanted them to have them all on one so the user thought they were on one map but they wouldn't there'll be different maps just conditionally shown that's one way of using them and like i said a minute ago you can actually take some of these on tap functions and you can move them about into the other ones to sort of change things about it's it's i've tried to make it so you can customize them and use these as building blocks to sort of start whatever you want to do with them so they are available if you want to go and look at them if not say go to the docs there are code examples and etc on here what you can use and obviously a little code was on the screen there that i was running through so you can go and look at them or you can build them yourself i hope you can it's uh that is pretty useful the the basic maps in Flutterflow are a little bit restricted in terms of user engagement. So if you want any kind of map that's going to have your user engaged with your app, this will do the job. And I've got the next sort of three months, I've got some updates planned in terms of expanding these widgets a bit more. So um, on the on the web page there, there is a, a bit of a small roadmap of the additions I'm going to add over the next couple of three months to make these even better than what they are. So go and take a look at that. Hopefully this is of use. Hopefully you can take some out of this to build maps for your apps and I'll speak to you in the next video.